Hi, everyone, and welcome to Real Life Talks. I'm your host, Yvonne Heath, author of the book Love Your Life to Death and founder of the I Just Showed Up movement. I am so excited to have, drum roll please, the monarch crusader here with me today. <laughs> it's great to be here. Carol, and your, your other name is Carol Pasternak, yes? Did Correct. I say that correctly? Yes. Hello, Carol, welcome. And I am I am just loving your, oh, look at us. We're like, we're like the butterfly ladies. And I have to make sure people can't see your shoes and socks. So you, they need to see them. Carol, can you, can oh, you do uh, a foot up just okay. for a moment? Here are the Monarch shoes. The Monarch, this and is the, the Monarch butterfly lady. Monarch life cycle socks. Yeah, and we won't ask what else has Monarchs on them. But anyways, that's it for now. So <laughs> Carol, you are a personal fitness trainer, training older athletes. Adults. You've been doing that for over 20 years. Correct. You have been raising monarch butterflies for over 40 years. Did I read that right? Right. Wow. And not only ha uh, do you do this, but you have written this book. And I'm going to show everyone how to raise monarch butterflies, a step-by-step -step guide for kids. I would say this is a step-by-step -step guide for kids of all ages. That would be a perfect description. Right, including adults, because um, I read this, I loved it, you have opened my eyes, I can never look at a butterfly the same, honestly. So, welcome, and I'd love to know, how did your love, your incredible deep love of monarch butterflies start? Well, 40 years ago, I was in law school, mm -hmm. and I went on a date with a guy in my class. And his idea of a good time yes. was to ride to the ravine, have a picnic, and look for caterpillars. Isn't that romantic? I agreed with him. <laughs> I married him. Oh, you're kidding. Okay. Well, there and you, for 20 knew? years, we raised monarch caterpillars together wow. with our children and yes. their friends and anybody who wanted to watch. Wow. This is a really healthy addiction. It is a healthy addiction. And you like you just opened my eyes so much to what a beautiful world this is. And I just I took notes because I wanted to make sure the one thing that I feel is really important. You said my work focuses on two critical problems. One, that not enough people care about the environment. The other is young people spend way too much time indoors with their devices. I truly believe if they raise caterpillars, both problems will be solved. I could not agree more, but I would love you to, to talk more about that. So we, we need to care more about the environment. How can being in love with raising monarch butterflies help that? What happens when we don't all care about the environment is we elect governments who don't care about the environment mm -hmm. and it's very hard to get anything done just by complaining. Right. And these uh, people who don't care about the environment wind up in business and they pollute the environment mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. everybody from the youngest age needs to care about the environment. We can't just do things because we should. Right. There's a lot of things we should do. But my motto is, it's gotta be fun. So yes. What can we do that's fun, that's going to improve our lives and save the environment and win for everyone? Mm -hmm. So you take a little caterpillar mm -hmm. that you didn't really think much of, and imagine you had to babysit for somebody else's caterpillar <laughs> yes. for one week, yes. okay? And you took care of it for one week, and then you came back to me with a report. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the report is that I woke up in the morning and it had no food at all and I felt so bad it had no food. Right. So I went and got it some food, the only food that a monarch caterpillar will eat is milkweed, okay. and I fed it. Mm -hmm. The next day, I thought it was dead. And I got Yvonne, I, I killed your caterpillar, I, I didn't no. mean to, but I thought it was dead. But you know what? It didn't die. Right. I looked in and it shed its skin. Mm -hmm. well, that was an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. It shed its skin. Wow. And then it started eating every single time I looked at it. It was eating and it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And one day I went to work and when I came home, it was on the top of the, of the cage. Yeah. And the next day it was still there. And so I knew it was dead then. <laughs> I went to work and when I came back, there was this stunning chrysalis mm. where the monarch butterfly had been and I didn't see a change 
Yvonne, you've got to give me another caterpillar. <laughs> right. And one step at a time, mm -hmm. you develop a reverence for life. Yes. And you watch it get born. And you can't imagine how you can start to care about a tiny caterpillar. That's what we think. And that's the secret. Now I care mm -hmm. about the caterpillar, mm -hmm. I care about the butterfly, I learn more and more about the story, and then the next time you go to the milkweed patch to get your caterpillar, it's not there. Right. The milkweed patch isn't there. There's mm -hmm. a house on it. And this has happened to me over and over again. Of course. And to everyone. And now that we care, now we really want to do something because now it comes from our heart. Right. That is just like what a simple task that can really change your relationship with nature. Right. Right. And, and caring more. And, um, and in, in reading the book and learning more and more, it, I mean, we had, we had pet rats. We cared about those rats so deeply. So, of course, you could develop that same caring about We took the rat to the vet. We did. Yeah, it, I know. It cost a right. lot of money to take that rat to the vet. <laughs> right. So, so, but it is, it is truly, it's that connection to nature and to nurturing something and watching it change. And that's the beauty of caterpillars turning into butterflies. Like how, the whole process is how long? It doesn't take a long time. The, turn, the turnaround time is so quick for a young person. Mm -hmm. From egg to chrysalis mm -hmm. is less than two weeks. Wow. Can you take care of a pet, Johnny, for two weeks? Two weeks. Can you prove to me that you can take care of a mm -hmm. pet? Well, you've got to clean the cage every day, and you've got to feed it every day. Right. And let's see if you can do that. Yes, and, and there's that again that nurturer inside and yes I can do this well and I will admit when I started reading and I'm thinking you're telling me that I have to clean the caterpillar cage every day and get it fresh food okay Carol I'm not sure I can commit to this but then oh two weeks okay yes I can do that and I mean the the prize at the end of it or or just knowing that you you cared for it and then watching every little step along the way it's extraordinary yes and you've got after it goes into its chrysalis you've got about 10 days where you can watch the chrysalis change right and the night before it emerges the chrysalis turns black so we know the next morning it's going to emerge okay so you know and you watch that and then there's a period when it's an hour and a half old, it's old, it's strong enough to be handled, but not strong enough to fly. Right. And you talk about payout. You can have that butterfly, in, butterfly your hand. in your hand. You can have a butterfly in yeah. your hand. You can look at all its little parts and it's it, it's it's cleaning its proboscis, which is its long tongue. You can watch that. You can put it on your nose and take oh. a picture. You can put it on a flower and take a picture yes. and then move it around because the lighting isn't perfect. And you can take more and more pictures and that's the huge prize that you get for taking care of it, which is not that difficult for two weeks. Right. And then it's ready yes and it flies off mm -hmm. to go on its life mm -hmm. and you've been a part of that and that touches you like I, there's no explaining that I can do that will make you understand mm -hmm. what th that's like until you have had a pet that you've set free or an insect Absolutely. that you sent free mm -hmm. Well, I have to tell you that, yes, I read everything, and um, our, our twins, Jane and Tanner, don't know this yet, but we're going to be raising some caterpillars and butterflies this summer because there is no more important connection, or it is one of the most important connections, our connection to nature and caring. And I have to tell you, I was very naive about a lot of the things that um, I read in, in the book, and one of them, well, first of all, these butterflies fly, they migrate all the way to Mexico and California. How, how far can they fly? Like 4,000 kilometers or something? In the they winter? fly about 4,000 kilometers. Uh, I was near here when oh I released God. a monarch that actually flew more than 4,000 kilometers to Mexico. Now, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. The end of every August and the beginning of September, I put a little tag on the butterfly. And it really? has a unique license plate kind of number. Wow. And that butterfly was found oh in my Mexico goodness. 
And I what? have this to prove it. You have something to this prove? This is Let's a see. certificate. Let's see. Certificate of appreciation. Congratulations. A monarch butterfly tagged by, wow, my goodness. So it was tagged in Halliburton and it was found in Mexico. Distance traveled 4,373 kilometers. That is, I, I just, it, that just takes my breath away. This, you should be very proud of that. Now with the tag, it doesn't, that obviously doesn't bother their little wings. While no, no, because so many of them wow. have wound up there. So now with wow. your children, at the end of August and September, yes. you become citizen scientists. Oh. You are now going to participate in the scientific education of everyone. Yes. Because they can track, if I tag a butterfly, someone down the road at Point Pelee, where mm -hmm. the monarchs leave to, to go into the States, oh, okay. may spot that tag. And I've recorded that I let it go on Tuesday, right. and they found it Friday, and so they know the path it took, mm -hmm. and the distance, and the time it took, and we record all this information, send it into Monarch Watch, and now we've participated in scientific knowledge, and that makes us citizen scientists. I want to be a citizen scientist. That is so okay. exciting. I'm going to share my tags I with you. I love it. Well, and the other thing, and it's funny because... I didn't really ever think of what happened to butterflies in the winter. That's just, I'm just being honest. I thought, oh, I don't, I just, I just thought they died and then more were magically born. No, the next. You know, I didn't ever think it through. But in Mexico, the, the, I read that at, sometimes there's like 50 million butterflies. Right. And the Day of the Dead is a very symbolic, significant time in Mexico where they honor those who have died. And they feel that all of these, these monarch butterflies um, arriving are the, like the spirit of their ancestors. Right. That is so Monarchs amazing. are very spiritual all over the world yes. and butterflies. And people have spiritual experiences with butterflies coming to them yes. at times when they need them. Absolutely. So that's well, that's yeah. a beautiful thing. Oh, it is. The, one of my favorite movies and my inspiration is Patch Adams, the doctor who you know brings joy to people in life, grief, and death. And I remember he was standing on the top of the mountain when his love died, and he said, you know, I need a sign. What? And this little butterfly came to him, right? And how wonderful to choose to believe that they, they are. They're magical, and I just absolutely love so the other thing about the environment that I did not even connect to, mowing the lawn, right? We all have these, we have a big lawn and we mow the lawn and talk to us about how that is very detrimental to the environment. Uh, the inv uh, our lawns, we have this idea that we need to have a perfect lawn yes. and it's useless. Yes. We spend a lot of time on it, we spend a lot of gas on mowers, sometimes there's electric mowers, but a lot of fertilizers that go, go into the water, a lot of pesticides that go mm -hmm. into the water and uh, pollute our rivers for fish, and nothing lives on the lawn. If there was something that lived on the lawn, you'd kill it right away. Right. But what we have is, is in the States, 6,000 acres a day of wild area is lost. And we don't have to look very far mm -hmm. around where we are to see that houses are replacing wild areas. Yes. If we don't replace some of the wild area, we will have no insects at all. And when they go, everything goes, right. including us. Including us. So I mean, this is serious. We won't have, so we won't have the beauty of butterflies, which is a treasure that everyone has had for millions of years. Yes. I mean, what beauty are we going to let go? Are we going to let music go? Art? Uh, architecture? Mm -hmm. Wildlife? Are we just going to let it go? So the only way to save it is to restore habitat, and it has to be everywhere. Yes. Our lawn, yes. our office, our community center, our school. Our schools, what wonderful Every wafers. Every patch yes. of land has to be reclaimed and turned into habitat. Mm -hmm. And water, you know, almost half the, the drinking water in many areas is used to water the lawn. Well, I'm letting you know, we have, and we have this big lawn in the front and the back. We rarely use it. Like, what do we do? I mow the lawn. That's so what I do Yvonne, with it. <laughs> 
here's what's going to happen. Yes. It's the weekend and you don't want to mow the lawn. You want to go look for caterpillars. Yes. So you go look for caterpillars and you raise them and you think this is the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. Now you find some other caterpillar. Maybe I should raise that. Or, or what's that yellow one? I would really like to raise that. And you raise more and more. And yeah. well, wait a minute, I don't want to have to go over there. Sure. I want to I want to stay right here and right find the here. caterpillar. So I'm going to have to plant the host plant mm -hmm. for this butterfly. Right. And the host plant is the plant that caterpillars eat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to need a tulip tree if I'm going to get uh, those gorgeous yellow uh, tiger swallowtails, okay. and I'm going to have to plant some dill if I want those stunning black, eastern black swallowtails. Mm. So I'm going to take a patch of this lawn, sure. and I'm going to put in native plants so that they'll native come plants. to me yes. and that I don't need to come to them. Mm -hmm. And then each year that you learn more, you're going to have to take another patch of your lawn because there's a few host plants and a few more butterflies that you want. And now, because you've put in the native plants, including the milkweed, you go out to the milkweed and you're checking it for monarch eggs. But there's other bugs on it. Mm -hmm. Think, well, if monarchs are this exciting, <laughs> I wonder about... Maybe these other bugs are too. About these other bugs. <laughs> then you're going to need to get a book like this. Oh, what do we have and here? This, this book see, describes... The large and updated second edition, Milkweed, Monarchs, and More. Field Guide to Invertebrate Community in the Milkweed Patch. Who knew? I mean, I've never even said milkweed as much as mm -hmm. I have in the last few weeks so, of reading. Yeah, so now you've got a milkweed patch. Yes. And there's a whole ecosystem in the milkweed I patch. No and idea. I'll tell you just about one fascinating insect. It's yes. tiny. You need almost a, a um, magnifying glass to see it. It's called an aphid. An aphid? Aphid. People don't like aphids. Oh. They think they're going to wreck the plant, but okay. most of the time they don't. Okay. But people don't like bugs on their plants. You're going to have a new attitude. When you see bugs on your plant, great. When you see chews in the leaf, what ate it? I've got to find out what ate it. Maybe right. I want to raise it. So you see these little yellow things. They, well, maybe I should learn something about aphids. Mm -hmm. Well, aphids, they don't lay eggs like all other insects. Okay. They give birth to live aphids. They give what? birth to live aphids. You're kidding. And there's only females. Well, that's unusual. That's unusual. <laughs> there's only females. Who knew an And aphid? now okay. we've got a plant with more and more and more aphids. It's getting crowded. Yes. What do the aphids do? Some of them grow wings and move to another plant. Wow. So there's the story of this tiny the aphid. The little story of the aphid. Thing, and we see what eats the aphid and what's the aphid eating. Mm -hmm. And that, pla that ants actually farm aphids, prevent them from getting eaten by predators so that the ants can eat the honeydew that the aphids secrete. Now, I know I'm getting too detailed, wow, but the point there's is just a there's whole a world whole there. world. Exactly. I love it. Well, and when I think of the lawn, back to the lawn, I mean, even if we took a portion of our lawn and planted native plants and milkweed and maybe think more about the fertilizer and what you're putting into the ground. Like, let's just, let's just think things through and compromise, but we need to get back to a serious connection to nature because it's like you said, at the end of the day, no bugs, no butterflies, no humans. Like it's, it's going to be this, eventually we will, destroy the earth we have to take action now we have to have the plants too because they clean yes. the water and the air okay so the plants also clean the water and the air that's what we survive on yes i mean this is all just it's such phenomenal information and yet like we we complicate everything you know we, we're looking for big solutions and this is a solution like you said communities how about senior homes like the right they could senior homes come alive when they raise yes that's what i was thinking caterpillars. so we have the health aspect of the planet surviving the other health aspect is you've been on your device for six hours get out of the house oh my goodness okay get out of the house yes. and what get out of the house hear and that what children. okay yes. get out of the house and go to the meadow or the backyard and look for caterpillars oh you don't have to tell me to get out of the house. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I can't wait till I have a few spare hours to get out of the house and do this. And then I've got to get out of the house and get the appropriate 
food for these things right. and it's fun you're not forced to do it it's fun and I'm not going to have to talk to you in two years to tell you that you need more a bigger garden and less lawn because you're going to want it well I already I already said to my husband I'm letting you know we're <laughs> gonna be getting some milkweed and and you know we're like so when you want to so say I want to convert part of my lawn where's the best place to, well I'm gonna call you obviously but the best place to get information it, yeah so I'm going to tell you how to get started with mm -hmm. your native uh, butterfly garden native plant garden. yes so we have many local garden centers that only sell native plants. Okay. If you go to a big center, it's pretty risky. They might have pen, uh, pesticides on them, mm. and you won't have the selection. Good so you check out the North American Native Plant Society, okay. and they have a website, mm. and they'll, you'll find out where the native plant gardens are. And you get yourself a book like I did when I started right. mine. For example, Lorraine Johnson's 100 Easy to Grow Native Plants. Oh, that's not okay. So Easy. you go through it and you pick out everything that you want. And yep. some are low, some are, are medium, some sure. are tall, some need wet, some need dry. And you pick it out and you get it all. And then you go to your native plant sale or garden center. And they only have one third of what you want. Okay. So after that, you say, well, then I'll take that one, and that one, and that one. Mm -hmm. And you use the Pasternak method of trial and error. Yes, the Pasternak method. Right. Okay, right. yes. And you don't have to know anything to start this garden. Perfect, because okay? that's what I know. You get the teenagers, which is exactly what I did. I have two. I had two teenagers, and I got them to dig out a portion of the backyard. They'll by be so hand. excited about that. By hand. I yeah. brought them, you know, Kool-Aid and freezies, <laughs> and they dug it out. Yeah. And then I laid the plants there, and shockingly, most of them survived. Uh, the children are the, the caterpillers. <laughs> the plants yeah. survived, yeah, well, the plants and okay. the, the children plants survived. too. Everybody did, yes. And anything that didn't, was an opportunity the next year to learn to put in something new sure so it, it really in the first season I had a gorgeous garden and then every year anything that wasn't perfect got adjusted and I'm not a master gardener and it worked and I'm not a master photographer but with digital photography mm -hmm. if you take enough pictures did you're you take going the pictures in your book something good and I took 90% of oh, the pictures in the God, book. Oh my God, spectacular. This particular picture is very, very popular. Look at this gorgeous. And it was my taken goodness. with an early six pixel camera. Wow, that and, is spectacular. And well, does, every, does everybody see this? Do you see this beautiful picture? Yes. Yeah, and the squirrels wow. planted this uh, sunflower in my backyard. Mm -hmm. And then they took it down the day after this shot. But I had a chance to take a thousand of those pictures because wow. The monarch was not ready to fly yet, and I put it on right. that sunflower. So yes. it's a photographer's dream Absolutely. come true. I didn't know anything about photography, mm -hmm. but I took enough pictures. You turn Your the pictures dials, are breathtaking. And I was able to get the pictures for that book. Yes. So you don't need to be a gardener. You don't need to be a photographer. You've got a hobby that can go in any direction. It can go into gardening. Mm -hmm. It can go into photography. And it can turn into a book. Well, and I love what you're saying here because you weren't a gardener. You certainly did not plan on writing a book, did no, you? No, no. At I was, all. I had no intentions of ever being an author. But Furthest that, thing from my mind. And you, you shared such critical information and and honestly just in reading it I'm so inspired and I to create a garden which I do not have a green thumb but you've helped me to see that I can do that and and if you weren't a photographer like the pictures that you've taken in here should win prizes and just what a beautiful way to first of all educate educate people about what we can do anyone children teens i think this would be great for teenagers really sure you know something just something for their own something to connect them and yes i feel the same way about the uh <laughs> the devices like we just we need to get kids back outside so this would be a great way to have something wonderful now i see there's a little cage or something beside you is this like what what would be good for a butterfly house this is the cheapest hobby you will ever have I like that. will ever have okay I paid fifteen dollars for this but you don't have to you can use any any takeout container okay. to raise your butterflies the caterpillars go in here the food goes in here and then 
the caterpillar crawls up to the top and makes a chrysalis. <gasps> oh, look at that. You have all little remnants there. And these there. are remnants of the chrysalis. And when you pull one off... Oh! <gasps> Wow. You realize that it has secured itself with silk. Wow. There is May I see this? Never Look at this. a dull moment in the rearing bin. Wow. Is you learn that something so every day? Interesting. That is so neat. And on Facebook, thousands and thousands and thousands of people share these experiences every day. Yes. And I scour the internet for success stories of conservation and I post those for people to read so that they too will be the one that goes to City Hall that gets Mayor Tory to take the Monarch Pledge, which he did, uh -huh. and the Monarch Pledge requires him to do all kinds of things in Monarch Conservation, and you see Monarch Gardens now all over Toronto, and I my job it. is to encourage other people to become teachers and to become advocates. I love it. Well, I mean, your book has sold over 35,000 copies, yeah. right, which is Wow, that's absolutely incredible. So people, like, look at how many lives you've touched with your book. I mean, that's just, you should be so proud of yourself. It, it is really fun to go and hear everybody else's story. It's a good hobby. It's good to teach. It's fun. It's rewarding. I love it. I wake up every day and I think, Butterflies. butterflies! Butterflies! I love it. Now, before we go, where can people get more information? And they can order your book from your website. Website is? MonarchCrusader.com. They can get the, uh, the book from any bookseller or online. Get this book. What an incredible hobby. This is something that can help us literally change the world, save our environment, save butterflies, and get kids outside. Carol? I am so thrilled that I've met the Monarch Crusader. Thank you so much for everything you are doing. You are making a difference, and I am so glad to know you. I will be calling you when I get my garden going and getting my caterpillars. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So thank you for joining us for Real Life Talks. This is a show about learning how to just show up for yourself, just show up for others, and just show up for the environment and even butterflies. So, my call to action is always if you want to be empowered and resilient and just show up, plan your life, plan your death, and then just love your life to death. And always, bring your own tambourine to the party. <laughs> Thanks, bye for now.